Hello guys, it's my second week here on board. And right now, I am having around 373 refrigerated containers. And so for today, we will be fixing this reefer container which is having an alarm. As you can see, the set point is negative 18 degrees Celsius and the supply is only minus 4.2 and the return is minus 4.4 degrees Celsius. The unit is having minus 1.0 bar suction pressure and 7.1 discharge pressure and it has an in-range fault and T supply 1 invalid alarm. So how are you going to fix this kind of trouble? And this is what we are going to do in this vlog. So before we go to the actual troubleshooting, I'm going to include you in this troubleshooting video. So just analyze the situation first. You have a minus 1.0 suction pressure, 7.1 bar discharge pressure, a set point of minus 18, a supply temperature of minus 4.2, and a return temperature of minus 4.4. There is ice present on the service valve of the economizer all the way to the compressor and on the economizer itself. To check the side glass, we have enough Freon on the system. In addition to this data, we also have this following information. The supply air temperature, return air temperature, as well as the evaporator temperature and suction temperature, which are almost all equal. Then, you can also find it here, the expansion valve percentage of opening, as well as the evaporator superheat. The compressor frequency is running at 100 Hz. Voltages and currents for the three phases are all the same, and we don't have problem on this area. The condenser fan is running at low speed and the evaporator fan is running at high speed. So what do you think is the problem in this unit? So pause the video for a while and analyze the situation because me, I am going to go and get some special tool to check what is the problem in this unit. I'm guessing that I have a problem on to our expansion valve solenoid. So I took my favorite tool, which is this permanent magnet, and I am going to replace the solenoid coil with this permanent magnet and see what will happen to the suction pressure. Be careful in pulling this solenoid coil as it has a lock on the top of it. You just need to put a little force and pull it out. There are different ways on how to check this solenoid coil and I am going to show you some of this method. Since this is a star cool unit, we can put it under manual operation. And within this manual operation, I am going to change the percentage of opening of this expansion valve. One way to check it is to put a screwdriver onto the coil, see if after changing the percentage, if it will attract the screwdriver. So I put around 15% opening on the coil and then as you can see, the coil is not attracting the screwdriver. It means that there might be no voltage present on the coil or the coil is the problem. So before going to the checking of the controller or the solenoid is the problem, I proceeded in putting the permanent magnet. As you can see, after putting the permanent magnet, the ice on the discharge valve already melted and the pressure on the suction side changed. And it means that the coil is really the problem or the controller is not giving 24 volts onto our solenoid coil. So I let the unit run for a while with this permanent magnet and see how it will 
response if we will get a good temperature after this so after letting it run for two minutes with the permanent magnet now it's time for us to check if the problem is coming from the solenoid coil itself or from our controller so this is the way how it looks like inside and then we need to check the terminals where this v expansion coil is connected into our system so what we are going to do is to see if the coil is the problem or the controller itself is the problem and the wiring diagram of this is at the back of this door so after checking we found out that the v expansion coil is connected to this terminal terminals 32 and 82 and these are the terminals 32 and 82 so we need to measure the voltage of this one while we have that 15 percent of percentage so as you can see that every time the controller will send signal to the coil it gives 27 volts dc and once it deactivated it will go to zero and then another 27 volts dc and so on and so forth this only means that our controller is giving enough voltage to our coil to open and close the solenoid valve so it is our solenoid coil is the problem we need to replace this coil and then after that we can have a good working unit we cannot keep this permanent magnet onto the system because we cannot control how much freon will be onto our low side or it will flooded the system before changing this solenoid coil while the unit is running you need to remove the connections onto the controller i did not switch off the unit while changing the coil because i want the temperature to recover itself so i just removed the connection so that once i cut the cables onto the coil side then it will not cause a short circuit so after cutting the cables of the solenoid coil i went to our storeroom and checked if we have this spare and then we just need to replace it so that the unit will be running in normal condition so we just need to replace the defective coil onto this new one so for some you might be wondering why i ended up suspecting this expansion solenoid coil so this is the explanation so this is our compressor so the flow of refrigerant is like this this is the discharge side and then it goes to the condenser and then it goes to the uh, water cooled tank and then the flow is like this this is the economizer and this is the solenoid coil so the pressure on to the discharge side is only 7.1 so normally if you suspect it that it is the coil is the problem or the expansion valve is the problem you will have a high discharge on the discharge side or a negative suction pressure but you might think that the 7.1 bar is not high enough and the unit is not stopping so there is no high discharge pressure alarm only minus one on to the suction side but because of one component present on the star cool unit and that is the economizer solenoid coil so the setup on the star cool unit is because this this sign that i had we have the economizer solenoid coil and at the beginning of the video we have this ice formation on to the side of the compressor and to the economizer side so which is that after this side so this one opens always opening and it bypasses the system because of the economizer solenoid and instead of going in there so it goes all the way to this point wherein this is always open and the ice formation is on to this economizer side all the way to the 
compressor. So this one has an ice formation. So this ice formation is enough for me to conclude that this one is not working. So this is the main reason why the unit is not stopping and causing high discharge pressure even our solenoid coil on the expansion is effective. In every refrigerated containers, you need to be familiarized in each refrigerant flow. So that ice in this side is enough for me to conclude that we have a defective solenoid coil or the controller might not be activating the coil. And that is why I ended up like that. So that's it guys. I hope you learned something from this video and this is your Lucky Jake and see you on my next vlog.